What is Gucci, everybody? I'm back, and it's been a week since I made a video. I was trying to make a video every day this month, but I didn't. This video is going to be about how to recognize touches and touches and taps and drags in your iOS Swift app. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but very helpful. <laughs> Lots of functionality is added, okay? I have this project already made or started. It's just a simple one window Swift app. You can make it two. And basically I wanna show you guys, I just made a orange square and it's at the top left. I just gave it some random coordinates and what we're gonna be doing is tapping on this orange square and dragging it by the time this video is over, okay? So you can just, I'll have all this code in the description below. Just click it. You can just follow me and listen to my explanations. So the first thing we're gonna do after we've added our rectangle to the sub view is we are going to create our gesture recognizers. We are going to create our way of telling the code that this object, this UI view, which we called rect, can be panned. And so I create a variable, a constant using let called pan, and using the UI pan gesture recognizer class, I then say that, hey, whenever anything is panned, I want you to call the function pan, which I outline here, it can be anything, any string I give it, and then I also do a colon because it is going to get a parameter. Okay, so I'm making a deal with this class, class called view controller, that I am going to have a function called pan and it is going to take a parameter and that parameter is going to be a UI pan gesture recognizer. Now I'm going to paste in below the code for that pan function. Okay, so I do a lot here and I'll do my best to explain it. So when you drag something across the screen, there are a few states you can have. There's the initial state when you are touching. There's an, the initial state called begin when you are touching, initially lay your finger down. And so that's before, you know, it's before you've obviously let go of your finger or started moving around. It's your initial touch, so that initial point. And then there's changed, which when you're panning around means, you know, you're dragging essentially, okay? And ended, these are all the possible things, you know, ended is when you lift your finger up, so that ending point. Okay, so that's pretty nice to know. So maybe if you're making a slingshot, a slingshot app, you would want to know where you ended your point so you could calculate the velocity based on how much the user bent back their slingshot. Okay, but in this case, we just need the case changed. And what we're doing here is I'm getting the rectangle, my orange rectangle, and setting the center to be um, the g dot location of touch and what location dot touch does is it gives me the location i'm dragging so it returns the location of touch you can just do touch index zero so what that is is that actually if you're dragging really quickly the computer can't really run the isn't going to run the function a million times if you just quickly rub your finger across the screen what it's going to do is send an array of coordinates to your view and you're just saying what index you want you can just say zero index to the first index you don't have to worry about this much the phones are good enough now where it updates fast enough where you really can't tell if you're taking in one index or just multiple indexes but if you wanted to you could loop through the indexes and do that and i'm going to say I'm gonna get the location of this relative to my view. So I'm not getting it relative to my orange square, I'm getting it relative to my view because I'm changing the location of my rectangle center relative to the white background, or else it wouldn't move, if you get what I'm saying. And then I also, for every switch statement, needs a default, so I have it printing hello. So by default, so whenever I end or begin, since I don't have a case for that, I'm going to print out hello. But actually, since I brought that up, I'm going to educate you guys and we're going to do, we're going to print out things when I begin and we're going to print things out when I end. Boom. And so we're also going to have a default hello. So that's very good. But if I run this app now, nothing will happen. I'm not gonna save you guys the time of, of wasting that time. And what you need to do is we've created the pan rec 
gesture recognizer above, and we've also made the function for it. But what we haven't done is we have not told my view or my rect variable about this recognize about this gesture recognizer. And so just like when we create a view, we have to add it to a sub view. We also have to add the guest the gesture recognizer. It could be a tab re recognizer or a pan get recognizer in our case that this is used for this view. So we're going to say this pan recognizer is applied to the rectangle. And so now when I run the app, ding, ding, doo, doo, you know, it's maybe I'll have some Jeopardy music in the background if I feel up to it. So hopefully if this all goes to plan, when this finally loads, you would then see I can now drag it and I'll move it in my view. It then, when I click down, it says begin, and when I lift up, it says end, and then I can move it as much as I want, and when I let go, it stays there. So pretty cool. So the, the center is permanently changed by my location of touch method. Okay, that's pretty nice. We're now gonna end this, end this tutorial with a much easier method, and that is how to do the tap. We're going to do a, um, we did a pan recognizer, which is a little bit harder, but what we really should have started off is with the easier thing, which is a touch recognizer. So instead of a pan gesture recognizer, we you do UI tap gesture recognizer. And so we simply get a target of self, and then we can say action tap, again, give it a parameter. And in advance, you know what we're gonna do? We're going to do rect dot add gesture recognizer touch. And also, I'm gonna show you guys a handy dandy method. We can use we can create our touch, but then we can say for this tap to activate, we can set the number of taps required. So we can make it two. So we can make it that this really is a double touch function. And so down below, we can do our func tap, and then we can do T, and then we can do UI tap gesture recognizer, and we can just print double tap. I'll get rid of this. And you can do anything in this method. You could add to an array. You could go to another screen. You could do whatever your heart desires because it's just a method like anything else. And it's, But it's triggered now to happen when you double tap it. So now when I double tap something, it says double tap in my command line right here. Okay, guys. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, let me know. Let me know if I should get a new haircut. See you later. Bye. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click right here to see more videos about basic high school, college, computer science concepts. Click down here if you want to see my latest videos on app development, iOS, Mac, and Swift. Have a great day!